You say that, furthermore, Speth, who's another author, proposed that humans biosynthesized sufficient DHA de novo from precursors. And the last argument is compatible with the, pre, the present existence of several billion people, including some hunter-gatherers, who have never eaten aquatic sourced food, yet they can, that they and their offspring can grow and support much larger brains than early humans. Now, I had Stephen Gundry on my podcast recently, and I was talking to him about some of these anthropology concepts, and he was trying to, or he suggested that human evolution occurred along rivers and waterways, and that much of our evolution was probably dependent on omega-3s from aquatic sources. And I, I've never really thought that this made sense to me, so I wanted to get your perspective on this. I think that the, um, there, there are plenty of omega-3s in the fat of uh, large animals. <laughs> we know this. I've done my omega-3 levels uh, on a completely animal-based diet of exclusively ruminant animal fat with no uh, fish in my diet, and my ALA was moderate, my EPA, my DHA were pretty darn high. <coughs> so, so what do you think about this theory that humans needed aquatic animals to grow large brains in the context of this omega-3 metabolism? Yeah, it's a very popular theory proposed by Crawford and Quinlan. And uh, I don't think much of it myself. Uh, yeah, I think uh, um, Cordain already wrote a paper, a very nice paper, showing that there is enough omega-3 in, uh, in uh, terrestrial mammals, uh, in the brain, I don't think in the marrow, in marrow I don't think, they, but, but in their brains, and I'm not sure what else, what, where else, I think in the brains, Maybe, maybe in other places as well, uh, to supply all the needs. Now, if you ag agree with the theory or the proposal that humans were apex carnivores, it means that they had enough, enough omega-3 uh, in, in, the, in the prey uh, to supply whatever they needed for their, for their brain. And then, then there's a proof that uh, even today, you know, with a much larger brain than the Homo erectus, uh, double, you know, Homo erectus started with 700 cc. So today we have like 1400. <laughs> and uh, so he, he, I think, and he, and he was a, he was a hunter. Okay, he was a carnivore. So if he could manage, uh, uh, we can manage as well. And if we, if we can manage with 1400 cc, he could manage with 700 cc quite, quite uh, well on the, on the prey, on the brains and the uh, other sources. Yeah. I'm also not convinced that massive amounts of omega-3 fatty acids are, are good for humans or are needed. I think that there's debate within the medical community as well that about this. And some people will say more omega-3 is better, end of story. And I think that's, that doesn't make sense evolutionarily. It, it presents our bodies with a large amount of uh, a very unstable fatty acid because it has many double bonds in it. And so- Right, they're, they're as unstable as omega-6, so. <laughs> exactly, they are some, in some positions even more because they have more uh, double bonds than omega-6. And I talked about this a little bit with Peter from Hyperlipid on a previous podcast, on my podcast as well. And so I, it, it appears to me that the humans do need a little bit of omega-3 in their diet, but it also appears to me that we can get more than enough omega-3 from a variety of sources from animal fat, whether it's the marrow, the, the tallow, the suet, or the brain. Um, you know, hunter-gatherers don't get the brain all the time. The brain is small. When I was with the Hadza, we ate the baboon brain, but... They're not eating brains every day. And so I don't think humans need to Well, even day. vegans have a brain. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. True. Well, and, but you could make arguments. There are interesting um, studies that suggest that you could correlate the level of B12 in someone's blood with the size of their brain, at least in elderly adults. And, of course, the, the suggested hypothesis or the compelling hypothesis is 
But as you have less vitamin B12 in your body, in your blood, you have a smaller brain. And that, that's what's been observed, at least correlationally. And so you could imagine that, you know, in populations, people who have less B12, they're probably eating less animal foods. I certainly see that in people that I work with and people that I know, when they eat more animal foods, their B12 levels go way, way up, often above the reference range that are calculated with two standard deviations from the mean. And so vegans eating less animal foods could potentially have lots of less animal-based nutrients leading to possibly smaller brains. I wish this were studied because that would blow the lid off of any discussion of the sustainability or health nature of a, a plant-based diet. That would be a horrible thing to do if you were shrinking your brain.